हेलो एंड वेलकम टू ग्रामा क्लास टूडेज टॉपिक इज क्लिफ्ट सेंटेंसेज इन इंग्लिश ग्रामा द वर्ड क्लिफ्ट मीन्स स्प्लिट ओ डिवाइडेड वी नो दैट इन इंग्लिश ग्रामा अ सिंपल सेंटेंस इज वन दैट हैज अ सिंगल इंडिपेंडेंट क्लॉज बट वेन अ सिंपल सेंटेंस इज स्प्लिट ओ क्लेफ्ट इन टू टू क्लॉजेस टू पुट एम्फोसिस or to focus on a certain part or element of the sentence it's called a cleft sentence so a cleft sentence is usually a complex sentence having an independent clause and a dependent or subordinate clause so a cleft sentence is used in place of a simple sentence to emphasize a certain part or element of the sentence first we have a simple sentence on your screen It's an assertive sentence. The chief guest unfurled the national flag. Here there is no emphasis on a particular part of the sentence. But if we want to focus on or emphasize the chief guest as the doer of the action, we use a cleft sentence here. It was the chief guest who unfurled the national flag. The two clauses of this cleft sentence are it was the chief guest number 1 and who unfurled the national flag number 2 similarly she wants a diamond ring is a simple sentence but if you want to put emphasis on a certain part of the sentence like a diamond ring we use a cleft sentence what she wants is a diamond ring it's now obvious that we structure a cleft sentence to put emphasis on a certain part or element of the sentence so we understand that in a cleft sentence some new information is emphasized along with what is already known for example tom won the first prize didn't he it's a simple sentence with a question tag in reply we have a cleft sentence here emphasizing the new information that it was bob who won the first prize so this cleft sentence has two clauses it was bob is the first clause who won the first prize is the second clause and the eat clause provides the new information that is bob as the name of the winner and the second clause gives the old information now you should also know that there are chiefly two types of cleft sentences or constructions eat cleft and what cleft As you know a cleft sentence emphasizes some new information in one clause along with the old information in the other clause and in it cleft the emphasis or the new information is in the first or it clause while in what cleft the focus or the new information is in the second clause the structure or pattern of an it cleft is it plus verb be plus emphatic word or phrase containing the new information plus the relative clause starting with that or who for example it was some hot soup that was served at first here hot soup is the emphasized element of the sentence now look at the structure of a what cleft sentence what clause plus verb be plus emphatic word or phrase what was served at first was some hot soup In this what cleft the new information or the focus hot soup is in the second clause. So it cleft and what cleft have different structures but uh, the emphasis is the same here. Now study some examples of it cleft sentences on your screen. It was at a local pub that they first met. Here the focused part is the expression at a local pub in the it clause. and remember it clefts may be interrogative or negative sentences also for example it was not my grandmother who brought me up the emphasis being on the negative expression not my grandmother was it the boss who you were speaking to the emphatic element here is the boss in an it cleft the emphatic element may also be a pronoun it was he or him that the police arrested as the mastermind well sometimes cleft sentences may also start with other pronouns like these that these those there etc for example this is the question that none could answer 
Here, the question is the emphasized element. The second and the third sentence are also cleft sentences because they are made of two clauses and they emphasize the school and the latest pictures respectively. I have already told you about the structure of what cleft sentences. Here are some examples of what clefts on your screen. What I do first in the morning is to meditate. Here to meditate is the emphasized element. I have also told you that in a what cleft sentence, the emphasis lies in the second clause. What really worries me is his poor health. Here the focus is his poor health. Sometimes another WH word may replace what in a cleft sentence. For example, how he did it is a mystery. Here the focus is on a mystery. But what about reverse or inverted what cleft sentences? The difference between a what cleft and a reverse what cleft is that in a what cleft, the what clause serves as the subject of the sentence, while in a reverse what cleft, the what clause comes as the object or complement of the sentence. Love is what can reform him is a reverse what cleft sentence and here the emphasized element is love. Similarly, the subject singing is the focused part of the reverse what cleft. Singing is what he does best. So it's clear that a what cleft sentence starts with the what clause because it is the subject of the sentence. But uh, in a reverse what cleft, the what clause comes second as it is the object or complement of the sentence. Well, cleft sentences may also start with all. For example, all I need is your love and support. In this cleft sentence, your love and support is the focused element. Then the cleft sentence, all he wants is some respect has two clauses and some respect is the focused part here. Some cleft sentences also start with the expressions the reason why or the one thing. For example, the reason why he was sad was his unemployment. Here the focused element is his unemployment. And in the last example, the one thing he can't stand is treachery. Here, treachery is being emphasized in the second clause. So we see that in all these cleft sentences, the emphasized element lies in the second clause. However, as stated earlier, in eat clefts, the emphatic element lies in the eat clause. So clearly a cleft sentence is constructed to put emphasis on a certain part or element of the sentence. Up next is the inferential cleft sentence. An inferential cleft sentence provides an inference or clarification. It consists of two consecutive or back-to-back -back clauses or sentences. And both these sentences or clauses have the eat that structure of eat clefts. Let me tell you that an inferential cleft is used to clarify a wrong assumption or something that has been wrongly assumed. So the first sentence or clause contains the word not and negates an existing wrong assumption while the second one offers the clarification. So the first sentence is negative and the second one is affirmative. We often use adverbs such as only, simply or just after verb be in the second clause or sentence. Now see some examples of inferential cleft sentences on your screen. In the first example, the first sentence it is not that I hate him negates the wrong assumption that I hate him. While the second sentence it is just that I am not comfortable with him clarifies the truth. In the second example also, the first clause, it was not that I was not hungry, removes the misconception that I was not hungry, while the second clause emphasizes or clarifies the truth that I did not like the food. So the inference is, I did not eat not because I was not hungry, but because I did not like the food. And as you can see, in an inferential cleft, both the sentences or clauses have the eat that structure of an eat cleft. It's not that he did not want to come. It's simply that as he was unwell, he could not come. Here too the first sentence negates the misconception or wrong assumption that he did not want to come. 
while the second sentence clarifies his unwillingness as being the reason why he could not come so that brings us to the end of today's class if you liked the video please do not forget to like comment share and subscribe to my channel for more grammar videos thank you so much